All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm Lisa Rosner with CBS2 in New York. I um, have the pleasure of having here with me William Daroff, um, who, as was just said, is the CEO of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. William started getting involved in politics, believe it or not, when he was just seven years old and has worked on more than 100 campaigns. He is an Ohio native and has held roles under Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama and has been named by the Jerusalem Post as one of the 50 most influential Jews worldwide. He is a key player in foreign policy circles, advising elected officials on Jewish communal concerns. And uh, William, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. My pleasure to be here, Lisa. Thank you. Yes, so I know that you studied Eastern European Jewry and the Holocaust in Poland after you finished your studies, and you recently had the opportunity to go back to help refugees fleeing from Ukraine. Tell me what that trip was like. It was, it was pretty amazing and remarkable. I was there about uh, two weeks after um, the invasion uh, to check out uh, the scene, to see what Jewish organizations were doing, to see how um, Jewish organizations were engaging with Jewish and non-Jewish refugees, to see what was happening with the Jewish refugees uh, coming from Ukraine, and it was, it was really amazing. It was amazing on a number of levels. One, uh, the Polish government and the Polish people really put out a red carpet uh, for the Ukrainian refugees in a way that, for those of us who know a little bit about the bilateral relations for the last few centuries between the Ukrainians and the Poles, uh, saw as being something that was different, uh, where restaurants were offering free food to anybody who was a Ukrainian, where people were opening their homes for Ukrainian refugees. Uh, that was amazing, and the benefits that the Polish government was giving to people. Secondly, the Jewish organizations that were engaged there um, were really very much punching uh, above their weight class. Uh, the Jewish agency, the Joint, uh, Hadassah, uh, NCSEJ, Hias, I should probably stop listing organizations because there were many, many that were engaged, um, really helping Jews and non-Jews alike. The JCC in Krakow uh, every night would go to the Krakow train station uh, and find people sleeping on the floor, Jews and non-Jews, and would put them up in apartments. It was just really amazing to see. Uh, and the scene there in the train stations in Krakow and Warsaw uh, and along the border very much uh, harkened back to the scenes of the 1930s, of refugee crises, of people, mostly women and children, uh, with all of their belongings on their backs, uh, with a backpack or a suitcase, uh, really, and the men not being there because the men uh, aren't allowed to leave. And so these uh, women with their young children and older folks, uh, really uh, amazing to see and something that one would have hoped uh, in the 21st century um, was left in the dustbin of history. Right, and we know Israel has been very involved in helping the refugees as well. So switching gears, what do you think are the greatest challenges facing Israel today? Right. On that note, I did have the great honor of taking an Aliyah flight uh, with refugees from Ukraine uh, to Israel. And having spent all this time with these Jewish Ukrainian refugees, I saw not one smile uh, until we got to Ben-Gurion. And then when we were on the tarmac, you could just see the, the, the release uh, of the tension uh, and people letting down their guard and realizing that they were home. And then coming and being processed by the Jewish agency, by the various ministers, ministries, uh, by the amazing work that Nefesh Ben Nefesh did to expedite um, these folks becoming uh, citizens right there on the spot uh, was remarkable to see. Uh, as far as the challenges facing Israel, I think that uh, there are many, uh, and there always are. Uh, my predecessor uh, and mentor, Malcolm Honlein, likes to say that uh, you can be certain of one thing. Uh, Israel is either about to be in a crisis, in a crisis, or coming out of a crisis, uh, or all three at the same time. Uh, and so that is certainly something that's there. I think the political instability in Israel uh, is concerning. Uh, but far and above that, uh, the security concerns continue to be front and center, both the threat from Iran, uh, as well as the, uh, the instability within Israel uh, with Hamas, uh, the Fatah, and other uh, terrorist entities that are out there mm -hmm. um, creating uh, uh, terror. What would you say is the state right now of the BDS movement in the United States, and how is the country doing in terms of combating it? You know, I think that uh, the BDS movement uh, is really, um, uh, first off, it is uh, the founders of the BDS movement, the Boycott, Divestment, Sanction movement, make very clear what their goal is, and that is to erase Israel from the maps. Uh, and that is uh, definitively an anti-Semitic act to uh, keep, uh, to, to not allow for Jews to have the right of self-determination. Uh, and a key indicator of the fact that BDS uh, is no longer 
uh, as much a flavor of the day as it had been in the past, has been the adoption of the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, the IRA definition of anti-Semitism, which among its examples shows that uh, clearly uh, pushing for double standards and treating Israel like no other country uh, is an indicator uh, of, uh, of anti-Semitism, of, of looking at Jews and saying, you of all people uh, do not have the right to determine yourself, to govern yourself, to have self-government. Mm -hmm. With 26 states, uh, a majority of the states have adopted the IRA definition. Uh, over 30 countries have adopted the definition. The Biden administration has embraced the definition. Uh, I think this is a real sea change uh, where folks are seeing that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about what you see happening on some college campuses? where they are supporting the movement? Yeah, I think that colleges uh, have, have always been sort of the last bastion uh, of these uh, failed causes, uh, and uh, it is concerning. However, if you look at all of the student government um, motions that have passed, and a few have passed, many, many have failed, there's not one university administration that has actually adopted a BDS uh, platform that's been passed by their student government. So once the grown-ups get involved, once people actually look at these issues and not just the sound bites on social media, we end up being in a good place. So I think we need to keep our eyes open. We need to stay focused on it. Um, but it's really, it's not the story. It's the, the counter story. Right. I wanted to get your uh, perspective. We know that bilateral relations were strained at times between President Obama and Netanyahu. How are Biden and Bennett getting on? Uh, they seem to be getting along uh, very well. Uh, there, the Bennett, uh, Bennett Lapid administration has, has focused on the idea of not having disagreements in public uh, and taking these disagreements uh, behind the scenes. And there are certainly some, particularly around settlements, uh, particularly around uh, other issues uh, in that neighborhood, uh, the Iran deal among them. Uh, but I think it's much better for the bilateral relationship when those differences are whispered behind the scenes uh, rather than uh, broadcast on, on CNN and Fox News. And so there's a real uh, working relationship between the Biden administration uh, and the Israeli government that I think is positive. Uh, and I think that uh, our government in the United States is very much focused on the idea of trying to allow for the Israeli government and this particular coalition uh, to be able to survive without having undue pressure uh, from America. The Biden administration is now pursuing some sort of new deal with Iran, apparently in the course of talks occurring in Vienna. What is the stance of the conference and the American Jewish community on this development? So I think we're, I think we're deeply concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm not certain that, uh, that an Iran deal will actually happen. Uh, the uh, impediment of the Iranians insisting that the IRGC, uh, the Revolutionary Guard, be removed from the foreign terrorist list uh, is something that was a bridge too far uh, for the Biden administration. It's actually a bridge too far for a vast majority of, of the United States Senate, uh, where well over 70 members of the Senate, including uh, over a dozen Democrats, wrote the president saying that they thought that that was uh, not a good policy. Um, we are concerned. We're concerned that the deal that President Biden promised, which was one that was uh, stronger and longer and broader, uh, does not appear, based on the leaks that we've seen from Vienna, to be the case. Uh, not a stronger deal, not a broader deal. Um, and it is uh, one that is of great concern, but I think that uh, at the moment we need to stay vigilant, we need to stay focused on it, um, but it seems to me that it's, and it, obviously there could be white smoke at any moment, but it seems to me uh, as sitting here now that a deal is not gonna be forthcoming uh, in the immediate future. Thank goodness. Thank you. So last question, your organization is connected to more than 50 Jewish organizations across the country. What do you see these organizations doing to strengthen their ties to Israel right now? Well, the connection between American Jewry and Israel is, is strong. Uh, and it is really, I believe, in 21st century Judaism, it is a key foundation of who we are as Jews, that we are Zionists, that we are supporters of Israel. Uh, our Conference of Presidents has the three religious streams, the Reform, the Conservative, the Orthodox. It has uh, organizations on the left, organizations on the right, north, south, east, and west. Uh, and we come together uh, to bring consensus, much like the Celebrate Israel Parade that many of us were in today, which was a broad collection of the community focused on supporting Israel. Um, I believe that at the end of the day, we as Jews agree on far more than we disagree on, uh, that we agree on 80, 85% of the issues, and that's where our focus should be, building that consensus, because a stronger, unified Jewish community means a stronger, unified, and safer Israel.
All right, William Daroff, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank today. you so much, Lisa. Wonderful to be here. Thank you all.